So hi, I'm Randeep Buttar and I'm the founder of Compliance as a Service Limited, which is a reg tech company that helps financial services institutions enhance the way in which they achieve compliance and deliver regulatory reporting. In addition to this, I'm also an interim director at HSBC where I look after risk data transformation and innovation. I would suggest this actually quite adequate given the fact that most of the regulations that have come out of Europe since the great financial crisis address the underlying root cause issues that we had. So for example, if you take the Basel III Accords, these are really about ensuring that we have the right quality of assets on our balance sheet and that where we do have risky assets, they are offset by good quality capital. And so from my perspective, when it comes to addressing things like the need for ongoing liquidity in the event of a liquidity dry up, then absolutely the regulations are appropriate. I mean, that's just one case in point. Uh, there are many others. So I wouldn't suggest that they're strict. I think that they're a direct requirement and absolutely needed. I think the key challenge for banks here is the volume of regulations. So there are so many regulations out there that whenever a new one comes on board or whenever an existing one is changed, banks have to respond. Typically in compliance, you tend to throw people at the problem and that just leads to an increase in headcount, which obviously, given the pressures that we have at the moment to cut costs across the industry, it's important that we get a little bit more smart and clever about how we address this. So what we don't want to do is start from scratch. What we, I think we need to do is actually look into ways in which we can determine the overlap between regulations. So that's one. I think actually understanding how you can inherit regulation or compliance that you've already achieved from a previous regulation to meet a new regulation is another. And so the strategy is really center on understanding how various regulations map back to your enterprise and therefore you can better determine your impact and also better plan against a future requirement. So I think it needs to be a combination of the two. I think ultimately there's a lot of internal in-house knowledge capital that needs to be leveraged whenever you're trying to address a regulatory compliance uh, issue. Uh, however, having said that, the reg tech market itself is projected to be valued at around 2.8 billion by 2025. And so in light of that, we know that there's a burgeoning ecosystem. There's a lot of specialist companies out there where they can demonstrate an expertise in a given regulation. We should absolutely be looking to partner up with them and um, lean on some of that good work. Absolutely, so I think there's a lot of potential for artificial intelligence and machine learning in the context of regulatory technology. Uh, in particular, when I think about reg reporting, uh, absolutely, we need to have the ability to leverage those types of tools, but in order for us to do that, there is a first step, which is having clean data that we can model on. And so the clean data will come from digitizing the regulation, disambiguating it, mapping it back to effectively data and information that models your enterprise, then you can start doing interesting things with machine learning. So when a new regulator comes on board, you can then determine how that regulation can be mapped to existing areas of your enterprise and also map back to other regulations too to determine the overlap between them. Um, in addition to that, I would say that you also can use it to then start modeling other things like the cost of compliance, uh, the future cost of non-compliance, the impact of a change in regulation, change in policy. So absolutely, I think there's potential for AI and machine learning here. I think it's still early days for subtech. Um, it's definitely an area that um, is going to start growing quite vastly. So if you look at the regulators themselves, in particular the ones in the UK, they are wholly embracing innovation. So they're definitely driving in that direction. But again, this is all about data. The regulators and the supervisors, they want to understand whether or not a systemic risk is coming and where it's going to come from and how it's going to arrive. In order for them to do that, they really need to have standardized data collected from across the industry to make those sorts of inferences. So I think uh, there's certainly an opportunity for startups to get involved in subtech when they understand that need and that challenge and actually start contributing solutions into that dialogue. Um, that's where you'll see a lot more traction as well from the regulators. And certainly you're seeing it today anyway through things like sandbox initiatives and accelerators. From my perspective, the outsourcing companies should really be providing features and technology 
that uh, would be useful in this context. Now, a lot of that is going to be quite generic. So, for example, do I really need to understand the nuances of specific rig in order for me to implement or provide a solution around um, natural language processing, text analytics, uh, semantic stitching, data matching, workflow, that type of thing? These are all the sorts of features that I think are important in the context of reg reporting. And I don't necessarily believe that the outsourcing companies or the startups need to really understand the underlying regulation in order to provide those types of generic and transferable technologies. Having said that, I think it's absolutely valuable if they came up and pitched and did it in the context of a specific regulation and they show a demonstrable knowledge of that regulation, then absolutely it's going to benefit them. It's going to certainly make them a, um, a more preferential option. Um, what I'd also say is that you know, you, you will never get away from the fact that in-house within the banking organizations themselves, you're going to have a lot more knowledge about the regulation. So, you know, it doesn't have to be too deep, but there should certainly be an appreciation and an understanding. I would say the biggest challenges at the moment are the increased levels of demand. So the volume of regulation that's hitting the industry is high and it's continuing to rise. Uh, in addition to that, I would also say that it's regulatory scrutiny. The regulators want a lot more information. They want it at a lower level of grain and a lot more frequently than they have done in the past. And so that's also a challenge, is being able to actually source that data, that information to provide a response. And then finally, I would say it's regulatory fragmentation. So at the moment, you have divergence sometimes within a country because you can have situations in the US where you have state versus federal regulators looking at the same regulation in different ways. Um, similarly, I guess across Europe where you have EU member states, they legislate in different ways to different directives or rather the same directive. And so you're seeing a variance in the way in which regulation is being interpreted and also um, translated into law. And I think that there is the need for more equivalence across the industry. I'll say that's probably also one of the key challenges.